Welcome to Bark 101, an all-breeds dog show focusing on the love, care, and companionship of our furry friends. Come join my dogs at our boutique kennel, which raises a rare old German breed named Hofevarts. We will share raising, loving, and care techniques that are good tips and information for all dogs' general care. Our furry friends have hearts full of love, and with proper care and attention, will be your trusted companions for life. From birth until passing over the rainbow, we will share our experiences for the benefits and lessons we can all share. I'll take you behind the scenes into my boutique kennel as I prepare and take my dogs through the care, love, and breeding process. Not everything goes according to plan, but the dogs and I seem to take the challenges head on. Welcome to Bark 101. This story begins with middle-aged man buying a puppy over the internet. Not just any puppy, but a hoof of art and a puppy that's supposed to be a great family pet. Now we've all heard about puppy mills and how bad they are and abuse the animals. Improper nutrition, improper rest, overbreeding, all bad things. And I want nothing to do with that, nor have my actions contribute to the problem. A pet should be considered a family member, not livestock. That's my opinion, of course. So I'm still gonna do what's right and buy from an ethical quality breeder. Now some things you can do is call a breeder, ask questions, go visit their facilities before you purchase a puppy. Go ahead and ask for references. Find out previous buyers and check on their experience. Look at the puppy's health records and get a history going of the sire and the dam. And see if there's any associations that they're affiliated with and are certified to be a properly licensed breeder for that breed of dog. So after doing my due diligence, I found my Anka. But she didn't start off big like this. She was a cute little button when I first got her. It wasn't too long that this little precious gem made her home in my office. And when we took her on vacation, she made her home as well. We've had her to the Badlands, Idaho, Wisconsin, everywhere in between. And she turns into a road tripping champion. So much in fact, I take her on zipline builds with me and she just travels along like any part of the crew. Now, it wasn't too long though that somehow this little precious got a hold of my heartstrings. And I learned there's a special place in heaven for the Hovavart. Now, this little gem, our Anka, also has a nose and I started to train her for search and rescue. So I put that nose to good use and started training. She's also been desensitized to restaurants, shopping malls, ATVs, jet skis, gunfire, you name it, she's about done it. But I did learn in Idaho, she loves snow. I mean, Hofovarts love snow. She also shows me that she likes the beaches too. And when I went down to our Zip Orlando course in Florida, she just took well with my staff. She was happy, she got along with guests, and before too long, she was our zipline mascot for the company. Do be forewarned, without proper training and socialization, these dogs can get aggressive and become a liability. It was really back up in Idaho when something triggered in my mind. They're so rare in the United States, and really worldwide for that matter, that I thought how precious I was to get one of about 600 in the entire United States. And I somehow, I needed to give back. So I began the process of figuring out what it took to breed the dog, all the steps it took to do it ethically, and I decided to become a kennel, go ahead and go through the testing procedures and get Anko evaluated to see if she could become a nice breeding female dog. And that is where this next chapter of my life begins.
Well, today you find us in Katy's, Kentucky. It's kind of a chilly morning. And for those of you who are fans of the show, know that I have a special dog called a Hovawart. And Anka today has gone through the show yesterday on her confirmation test to check her eyes, her teeth, her ear placement, her tail length, her fur type, her pads of her feet, making sure it all fits the, uh, the breed standard. The Hovelwork Club does a great job supporting us and flies a German judge over at least once a year to look at confirmation of our dogs, making sure that the breed standards met for size, weight, eyes, ears, fur, and everything else. Everything's recorded, and if they pass the confirmation test, they move on to the temperament test. Today we're doing the temperament test. So if we can pass this test today, Anka then can be bred and we can have more little Anka puppies. That'd be so awesome. But the Hovelwort is a very, very old German breed. Very stable, very confident, a good defense dog. Not an attack dog, but just a defense dog that holds your ground, very family oriented, knows its territory and is confident and strong. So part of these tests with the temperament with the dogs is to kind of stress them out with new, strange sensory inputs, like a person jumping up or uh, chains on a lid of a can. But the whole idea is to play with the dog, toss a toy in some plastic water bottles, have it find it, and see how the dog internalizes that stress and fear and holds true to the owner's hand. The temperament test now looks into the psychological aspects of the dog and how it behaves. Is the schnout desensitized? Will it accept strangers once the owner has accepted that stranger? And does the dog handle stress in crowds? So you want the hovawart to hold its ground and not advance, but also not cower as they approach strange people, loud noises, in unique situations. It's not until you pass both the confirmation and temperament testing before you can be considered part of the breeding stock. So on Hova Warts, they also come in three different color schemes. They come in all black, a black and tan, sometimes called a black and gold, and also an all gold or blonde. They're a beautiful breed. So if you haven't seen what a Hova Wart is, H-O-V-A-W-A-R-T, you gotta Google it, Yahoo it, Bing it, search it, look it up. It's a fantastic breed, a fantastic dog. Anka passed. So off to Salem, Oregon we go. Good morning from Salem, Oregon. It is now Sunday morning, and we are headed on over to meet with the stud. That's right, not for me, but for Anka. We're gonna breed her today. But she's been uh, in preparations with confirmation tests and temperament tests and hip tests and thyroid tests and just every test you can imagine to make sure she's okay to breed. There's so few hobo wards, they gotta make sure they made them up correctly. And this is the first stud on the list that the breeding director approved. So we had to come this far to make sure we had a good match. So we're gonna go meet a dog named Berkeley. He's a, a black and gold hobo wart. Best of show a couple times, really nice dog. And I'm gonna have a talking with him. I wanna know what his intentions are with my Anka. <laughs> And I think I already know the answer. So, anyways, we're gonna have puppies, I think, by around early November, and ready to go to new homes by Christmas, January-ish time. So, stay tuned. I hope the dogs like each other, because if so, then we're gonna let them go out in the backyard and make puppy love. <laughs> stay tuned. Dun, 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 right to business. <laughs> now we'll provide them a little screen of privacy, but we do need to monitor the situation to make sure Anka doesn't get overly tired and just lay down. After all, Berkeley does weigh about 85 pounds and it can be quite a process. 
But he's getting 80% covered like Elizabeth said he should, the breeding director. No, not her eye. Well, the first going around didn't go so great, folks. So we went in, met the stud dog. You could smell Anka on me. His name's Berkeley. Nice looking dog. Real pleasant, real friendly. Got Anka in the back in the back patio. Um, she sniffed around, did a little scenting, let them at each other, and boy, there was no foreplay. It was business time. So after about 25 minutes now, we have to separate them, give them about an hour break, and it's a do-over. Oh my God. So I kind of thought this would be a done deal. But this might take a whole day event with try after try after try. And <laughs> we called the breeding director for advice. And she told the owners of the stud dog, help them get excited. Help them get excited. So quickly, <laughs> they start pointing at each other like, uh oh, he's your dog. He's your dog. So <laughs> to see the owner over there helping her dog helping my dog <laughs> is quite the sight to see now helping your dogs get proper coverage and placement by holding their hips up is a crucial part of natural breeding separate the dogs give an hour or two to rest take a nap and then round two <laughs> <laughs> Well, after multiple days, our dogs did not make a love connection. So it's off to the vet, who's a breeding specialist, collect a sample, and then we're gonna do a TCI, a trans-cervical insemination. It's right in through a 12-inch vaginal canal, right in to the cervix directly. And then about six weeks later, we're open to taking x-rays. And the vet says he counts skulls and he comes up with a count of eight. And when I look and study the x-rays, I see eight skulls and nine spines and hips. So we're wondering, are we gonna have a special extra puppy? And two weeks later, we learn the answer to the question. Puppy paws. It's been 61 days, folks, in Salem, Oregon, and over there, say in Berkeley, and we're on watch, and before you know it, Anka starts dropping puppies. Wow, now things are happening fast, folks. I've been paying attention, puppies are coming, but we still got to get Jake and Skylar and Garrett and Stephanie in the house to help me out because there's a lot going to be happening here. And first to the new world and first to feeding is the blue male puppy. Woohoo! Now I don't want to get too gruesome here, folks, but with every puppy, there's going to be a placenta. And we have to make sure that for every puppy, that placenta comes out in full in all the pieces. And if you remember, we're not quite sure if we're gonna have eight puppies or nine. So there's a lot going on. There's the birthing. I'm having to dry them down and weigh them. Anka's having contractions and in full labor. Skylar and Jake are running, getting me supplies and videotaping. It seems easy, but there's a lots of things to orchestrate. So, all hands on deck. Here we go. Enjoy the ride and witness the miracle of life. first. She 
you got the sack to work on, that's good. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. Now on these slow moments in between puppies, it's not that slow. I have to make sure the current puppies are still moving around and agitated and breathing and have good activity. I'm checking their umbilical cord to make sure that it's been severed and it stopped bleeding. And I also have to be checking on the health of Anka because around that fourth or fifth puppy, she can start getting low on her calcium. And we can either give her calcium or feed her vanilla ice cream. Well, guess what, folks? Anka likes vanilla ice cream. But the calcium helps her with the birthing process. The liquid helps her hydrate and keeps things moving safely forward. Now the puppies are talking and squeaking and that's a good sign. That lets me know all the mucus is out of their nose and throat. They have no problems breathing. Anka can hear them, so she's not worried about their location. But I'm keeping them over here in a box in a towel nice and warm because they can't regulate their body temperature for about the first 10 days to two weeks. But I'm also just preparing for any stillbirths. Luckily, we didn't have any, but I'm also prepared for that as well. Now this blonde puppy came out squeaking and barking nice and loud, but it's got excessive amount of amniotic fluid all over it and mucus, and I'm a little bit concerned it might have it in its throat and nostrils. So I'm focused on getting it breathing and getting it cleaned up. Now with all that screeching and barking, Anka's starting to look around for her puppy. So it's important for me to get the puppy down in front of Anka so she knows where it is, starts cleaning it off, and doesn't get stressed. She's still having contractions and delivering puppies, but she can hear the previous puppies, and now her mama instincts are kicking in. Now while we have a slow period here folks in between puppies, I want to take a moment and speak about the breeding process. With these dogs so rare, you've got to follow the breeding recommendations and the procedures by the Hovavart Club of North America. There's no crossbreeding, it's unethical, it's not allowed. You've got to check their genetics and their pedigree to make sure you've got enough diversity because you don't want to have any abnormalities in the birthing process. Hi, this is Kodak, everybody. He's a Malinute lab mix, and my son picked him up at the local shelter out in Idaho when he was out there on work. Kodak came to us about two and a half years old, and he's just full of love. Now, a lot of folks don't think about adding a furry friend or family from the local shelter, but there's so much to offer there. They've got older dogs, housebroken dogs, dogs that have been surrendered that are 10 years old, even down to litters of puppies. They've got a great way to distribute them. They've got internet presence and social media, and they're a good first step to go visit to get a family friend. Yeah. I couldn't imagine having Kodak not part of our family now. So from Kodak and I, remember, support your local shelter first when you're getting a furry friend for your family. And don't forget to help control the pet population by having your pet spayed or neutered. As an ethical breeder, I must point out some issues about the dog. First, they expect to be loved. This is not a dog you put in your backyard, hook it up on a chain, and forget about it all day and all night long. No dog loves that, but the Hovavart is a very smart, intelligent dog and it expects to become part of your loving family. You've got to treat this dog with respect. It's intelligent, it's smart. Now it develops a little bit slower than most dogs and takes about two to three years to get to full size and mental maturity. However, the dog does exhibit decision-making skills. So the more time and effort you put in the front end, the better you'll have a mature, healthy dog later on. And the male females, they're about 15 to 20 percent size differential. This is actually a large dog, folks. So you've got to make sure you can handle 
a 65 to 110 pound dog. And they've got a heart full of love. They play hard and they love hard. And they're stubborn, they're strong, they're confident, and they're independent. So you've got to give them their space. They make great shadows around you, but they're not the cuddly dog. They're the dog that's your loyal companion. And like every pet, vet visits, brushing their teeth, proper nutrition, keeping up on their shots are all must-dos with the home of art. There you have it, folks. Nine puppies, their birth weight, and their birth weight at one day old. Now, over the next couple days, it's going to be kind of touch and go because we still might lose a puppy. So join us next time as we witness the struggle for life as these little precious gems hang on to see who survives. Join us next time on Bark 101. Hey everybody, and from Kodak and I, please visit your local animal shelter first when you're looking to add a furry friend to your family. Also help control the pet population by having your dog spayed or neutered. It's right.